what is a 10 car fishing rod and why do you need this for ham radio? We're going to use this fishing rod as an antenna mast. I'm going to give you three examples of antennas you can put on this thing at three different locations. And I'm going to show you two simple ways to deploy this antenna mast. And it really is a fishing rod. It's for fly fishing. It's a Japanese fly fishing technique. And the mast happens to work good for ham radio. But for now, I want to go over the details of this antenna, give you the specs so you know why this might be a good fit for your antenna go kit. Now, this particular model is the Blue Sardine Flexible Carbon Fiber Fishing Rod. I think I picked it up at AliExpress. You can also get these on Amazon, and I'll put a link in the description below. Let me know if you've used anything like this before and uh, how you like it. The size for this rod is 7.2 meters. It's about 24 feet. And while it's that tall, you're going to end up taking the top section out because it's super, super thin. And with that top part missing from this fishing rod, it ends up being 21 and a half feet. Plenty big enough to put up an antenna. The average cost for a fly rod like this is going to be $30 to $40, depending on where you get it and what size you get. Well, I've been using these kind of masts for a number of years. As a general rule, these rods are going to be carbon fiber. Now, this rod or mast, and I'll call it a mast from now on, when this mast is fully collapsed, it comes in at 29 inches or 73 centimeters. The diameter of the mast is about one inch or 2.54 centimeters. This mast comes in at about 13 and a half ounces, which is about 383 grams. Now, later in the video, I'm gonna talk about some of the maintenance and the things you can do to make this mast even better than it already is. But for now, I'm gonna take you out and we're gonna put some antennas on this thing and show you different ways to get this thing on the air. All right, down here at the park, we're gonna put up the uh, mast. First antenna we're gonna put on here is the Para Enfed trail friendly antenna. We're gonna put this thing in the ground. I picked these up at a normal like Lowe's Home Depot kind of a store, big box store. And I'll put a link in the description below. And I took and I ground off the uh, first side of this thing. This thing stays nice and flat. It's a great way to keep this thing straight up and down. And the key to getting this thing straight up in the air is you kind of anticipate the way the wind's blowing or the way the ground that you're on is at. So if the wind's blowing really hard this direction, you want to put your stake in the opposite way. So at the top of the mast, it's going to have its chance to fight how it's being pulled. As I mentioned before, we're going to take that cap off. I'll be able to reach in now and grab a hold of that pull string and start raising this antenna up. But before we do that, I only want to pull up a couple of them so I can attach my antenna right now before it gets really high up in the air. All right, the first antenna is the Para Enfed antenna. This thing is for 25 watts. It's 10, 20, and 40 meters is what this is designed for. It's super lightweight, super thin wire. And this is going to be perfect for our little portable mast setup. All right, so we're taking the end of this antenna. It's got like a little hole on this thing. I'm going to tie a simple knot to it because that's going to come out and it's going to stay on long enough for this portable operation. I didn't mention this before, but to get these sections to link together, you're just going to pull it tight and you can give it a slight twist and turn as you're pulling on it. And now this thing is as solid as it's going to be. So now when I let go, these sections are where they're going to be in the bottom. Now I only want two sections up here so I can get to this string and we're going to tie on the antenna. That's the first antenna, end fed at the top of this thing, rock solid. Same thing applies, you give it a slight twist and push down and these things come right apart. A friction locking mass like this, it's a piece of cake to operate. This antenna is one of my favorites, it's the most reliable one I've got, it's a portable linked dipole. And I made this a long time ago, I've got red for one side, black for the other. This way when they're put together in a tangled mess as often happens, you can tell them apart. You have a way to sort out the mess. Now, another tip before we get this thing up in the air is the coax. I'm gonna be using RG174. It's thinner, lightweight than RG8X. And for HF, it's gonna be just fine. For a mast like this that has such a low weight capability, this stuff is still gonna make it sag, but it's not gonna stop my operation from happening. The same idea with this antenna, and I'm using a BNC, one of these BNC banana clip adapters. There's a hole in the center of this one, and so I use that to put a little loop of string. I put some paracord in there, tied a knot around it, and this little loop is what I'm going to use to hang on to the piece of string coming off the mast. All right, a couple of notes here, a couple of tips for doing something like this if you've never put up a dipole antenna, like a portable operation on a soda activation or even POTA. If you get your ends out first, 
that's gonna keep them from tangling at the base of the mast as you're raising everything up. And for the coax, I'm using 25 feet. I purchased the length of this a long time ago for this purpose. And the reason for that is I only want it to go to the bottom of the mast. I don't need to go off to some other location. I'm gonna be operating right from the base of this mast, especially when using a dipole like this. So let's take a look at this mast to see how it's sitting right now. The wind is not blowing, and I've not extended the arms of the dipole out to their fullest extent. But if I did, those arms work as a guy, as a guy rope to hold this mast in place. It's not always gonna work when you're trying to get north, south, or east and west. Typically, you'll never get it the way you want because of the way things are at your operating position. Now, oftentimes, as are so many cases, when you get out there, the coax isn't gonna stick with the mast. So if you pull away from it or the wind's blowing, your coax can actually hinder your ability to keep this thing straight up and down. So one way around it, one tip that you can add to this is make one wrap, one loop, maybe two. That'll keep the mast more straight because the weight of the coax is gonna be up and down. All right, that's antenna two. The third antenna is going to be a vertical. How do you deploy a vertical with a mast like this? And I'm gonna show you. First, I plant that orange stake into the ground and use the aluminum orange twist tie. And for the vertical antenna, we're using a BNC to banana clip adapter. And that thing's gonna be mounted with Velcro to the side of the mast, making an easy fit. And whatever wire you're gonna use for the radials, you're just gonna put some ring terminals on these things. And I usually put two radials for each ring terminal and then screw that down to the banana clip. This setup makes it really easy to attach the coax to the bottom part of this adapter and get this antenna on the air. And for the vertical element, you're gonna do the same thing. Hook a ring terminal to that thing and screw it down to the banana connector. Now, if the wire is too long, you just need to wrap, slowly wrap a couple wraps around your mast on the way up to the top to take up the extra slack so it'll reach the top of the antenna and you'll get a full extension of the vertical that you're using. Now, the center insulator is gonna be mounted about waist high or so, so the elevator radials are off the ground and those are gonna slope back down to the ground farther away from the mast. To secure these radials at the far end, you're just gonna hook those up to some cheap tent stakes that you can just barely push into the ground and that's gonna hold it great. Now, a side benefit of having a vertical like this is those radials are gonna act like guy ropes or guy lines. Pull those out to where the radials are not quite touching the ground, but they're extended out. Just kinda drive those tent stakes in the ground and you are good to go. So far, I've given you one way to set up this mast for portable operation, and that's driving that orange stake in the ground. Another way to do this is by using rock piles when you're on a soda activation or an area where there are no trees, but you do have a rocky environment. There have been many times when I've had to use rocks to set up my antenna to support that thing and keep it from falling. And that's where the oversized shrink tube comes into play to protect your mast from damage. So now that you've seen some practical examples of getting a wire antenna up in the air with this mast, I wanna go over some of the maintenance things or the changes, the modifications you can do to make this thing even better. Your mast, it comes with this cap that pops on and off, which is great, but the first time you lose one, and I have lost a few, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you don't lose any more. So you take some real thin thread or some paracord string. This is some of that 30 pound paracord that I've listed before. I'll put a link in the description below. And I wrapped a couple of wraps around the rod itself, put some uh, orange high visibility duct tape on there. And now this thing's going nowhere. The next tip is reinforcing this mast. When we put this thing on a rock pile, while that's a good thing to do to make this antenna mast get put up in the air, it's really tough on the carbon fiber. And you don't wanna be chipping this thing and make it worse. So I found some one and a quarter inch shrink tube to put on the outside of this thing. And now it takes the abuse instead of the mast. It may not show up in the camera here. This is super beat up, super chewed up. The mast itself is in perfect condition. Now here's another important uh, tip for maintenancing this rod. And you may need to do this. You use it out in the rain, the wind, the dust, the dirt, stuff's gonna get in there. And you need to fix that. So I take some duct tape, wrap it around this base so that it, one, it won't unscrew, and two, dirt's not gonna get in here, damage the device, the cap that goes on here. And the reason it's so important to take care of this cap is when you take this cap off, you have access to all the sections. You can take them out and clean them, fix the order, or you may have a problem, which I've had a number of times, where one of these sections gets stuck inside the mast, and you need to take it all apart, clean it, put it back together. 
and that's just part of operating. Now, in the beginning of the video, I talked about how we want to remove one of the first sections, the top section of the mast, and you do because it's super weak. And when you're going to deploy your mast, it doesn't always want to come out just because of dirt and everything like I described before. So when you go to tip this over and get the mast out, it's not always going to come out. That's just the dirty truth of it all. I've taken some paracord, wrapped a few different knots around it, and let it slide into the mast section itself until it gets to the end. And now there's enough knotting that goes in, up inside here to let it so that it won't come out. Now you have access to the amount of string that you need on the outside. Hopefully this idea will give you some creative inspiration to come up with something different. And if you do, let me know in the comments down below. Now because we've got this small piece of string or paracord out here for attaching the antenna. The secondary use for this thing is being able to retrieve it from the mast itself. When this thing drops in and it's going to drop farther than it needs to, you need a way to grab this thing and there's just enough out here to do it. Now it is short enough to fit inside here so I can coil this thing around or just stuff it in and now the cap fits right back on. So having that string on here makes all the difference in the world. I just have to reach down and give it a pull and I'm good to go. And that's excellent. Now I'll put a link in the description below for all these parts that I use to set this thing up so you can put something like this together for yourself. Having a few of these or even just one of these on hand is an awesome way to get yourself on the air and get operating HF. Need another antenna setup video? Check this one out here.